Okay, welcome back to How Realist Hero Built the Kingdom, in review, episode number 17. This one covering the 17th episode of the anime, which is called The Warrior Dies for Those Who Do Not Know Him. This episode surprisingly covers a lot more than the last couple chapters, a couple episodes did. If you're curious though, how much does this episode cover? This book, this episode covers two full chapters and an intermission. And you're thinking, really? They cut some out? Oh yes, they did. They turned out a lot of conversations. Like they cut some bits of dialogue out. They gave a lot of the important stuff in there, but a lot of the other bits they really just cut out here. <clears throat> First, start with Haku. This is from the intermission, by the way. The second intermission. The first one, as far as I can tell, was not adapted. No. So. Excuse me. I should also point out, though, this is the first episode of the entire series where adapted from, the, from an intermission. Not from a... Um, not from, basically... Now, they adapted the extra stories, the, the certain group of entries, they adapted all three of those in all three episodes. But the intermissions, in the seven, in the previous 16 episodes, this has never happened before, where they adapt this. Basically, this one starts off, basically, this is just a conversation between Haku and Genie, the sister of Maria, from the, from the Chaos Empire. So, basically, they have a discussion, and it's mostly intact from the book. Where they discuss, oh yeah, the Maria's agreed to everything that Sultima asked for. And basically, it's sort of a good friendship between the two of them. Of course, there's a talk about the books. And after the conversation ends, there's a brief talk with some shadowy person. And that's that. It's a scene that lasts for, like, about two, three minutes. Then we cut to Sultima. Yeah, this comes right after that one. Sultima visiting George Carmine in, pre in a dungeon. Which, yes, I have Book of Two. Uh, though they actually added in the effect in the anime of the bars. Because the book only shows a picture of him in the cell. Not the bars themselves. Basically, he's in this dungeon. He doesn't find a place very peaceful. Now, I should point out though this conversation was a lot longer in the book. As a matter of fact, this whole conversation pretty much took up the entire chapter. Like, yes, this is completely true. Where that's simply what this scene was. It's simply put this entire chapter is one conversation. That was significantly trimmed down. Mostly probably talk about the various stuff that's happened. And also the fact that the Krop nobles want to publicly know they've been executed. But their families are left alone. And George Carmine basically. <clears throat> because of the fact he needs to be martyred. So. He's given a small thing of poison wine, and he's asked to drink it. He's not told to drink it, he's simply asterisk, so he's not basically public executed because he's basically being a martyr. And he does. He also entrusts Lucia to Sotoma, and so he says, basically, that's fine, she's already part of my family anyways. It's a really good scene. Uh, it's something, though, they actually trim the scene down a bit. Like, I would say chunks of the conversation is missing, but... As far as I can tell from reading the reading the book, uh, the chapters anyway, the chapter that the scene was stabbed from, like, they kept all the important stuff in. Like, all the side stuff they did cut out here. And then George Carmine dies. And then the very next scene is the start of chapter 7, where, basically, Sultima is informing Lucia about George Carmine's death. It's a very brief scene. It's a tiny bit longer in the book but not by much there's also Serena the head maid she pops up in the scene in the book in the anime she's not there because at this same conversation they go straight to the throne room which pretty much mostly what happens here is from the action book itself like they did cut one thing from here uh, the character West he, he actually did appear in the book itself there's a tiny segment for him uh, they cut this out so they first focus on House Fire Gavis, where basically he's given the... Oh, before I continue. One important conversation bit they kept in the anime. The fact that... Um, that Carlos' father's territory, the, the, the Vargas Duchy, has been disbanded. Though the disowned son, that I mentioned he was disowned... <laughs> that he's inherited the name and the Red Dragon City. 
but not the immediate lands. They also mentioned all the lands associated with nobles uh, that have been seized and their wealth basically taken from them. And they also mentioned, and this this got with the book too, that they do bring they 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 actually brought like, sell this conversation, and her bits are actually cut from the anime. They were probably cut due to time. They probably had to get to the scene as quickly as possible while keeping the important bits in. That's probably what happened here. So they do, in fact, bring up the fact that the trial of Carla and. Caster is going to be handled at a later date. That part is true. They kept that for the book. Like, it's interesting, though, that when it comes to what they kept in the anime, there was nothing in those no anime lines in the scene. Mostly put just the same as in the book, though they cut some lines here. And now we finally get back to talk about how his father, where he's given the... the he's given... The, the Not Lucas, basically one of the air cities, and he's given a partial authority... Over the army until it's properly organized into the uh, defense force. There's actually a bit here they actually do kind of hear some bit of narration related to the, the, the uh, Freedian Kingdom defense force. Yeah, there's a bit cut out here. They may say this for an open narration. It's possible. They haven't had one. Uh, surprisingly, I should point out though, if recurred to, they actually have stopped the. They actually stopped the open narration where they explain stuff at like episode like five or six. Uh, not really sure why they did that for. Maybe because it's, it's from like later late, late, late chapters and later books. It's possible that's probably the reason why for. <clears throat> now after after Glove, then came West, which is a very tiny scene. It's just like in the book. This is basically takes up a small paragraph in the book, and if this uh, they probably kept this out of the anime. Uh, probably due to time. If there was a scene, if this particular tiny moment was put in the anime, it would only last. A minute. Yeah, it's that short. And then comes Alyssa's father. Which, in the case of this particular conversation, it's mostly there. I'd say about half the conversation was cut time. And mentioned the whole thing about thank, thank for reinforcements. Like a reward. And he does a reward. Take his daughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> and of course, I see has got no problem with this at all. And then he... They actually do change the slight wording here. With this conversation, how he asks her, because in the book he says, "Ask her to marry him." In the book, in the anime, he says, "Will you be my wife?" And she's like, "Yes." And of course, you see her blushing, and her ears are blushing too, which I found to see be so hilarious. And Lucia having no problem with the fact that, and of course, they announce Lucia will become the first primary queen, and Aisha will become the second primary queen. She has no problem with this at all. We see Judah's a, a bit depressed by this because, oh, something was getting more wives and she's not included. And then Judah basically by much her accomplishments. And then, of course, Excel steps in and says, hey, I have, like, thank you for all the accomplishments, but can you do one thing for me? Can you uh, take Judah's hand in marriage? <laughs> and because of the fact that, well, it's obvious she's in love with him. He says he would, but he can't at the moment. It's actually impossible due to her being the lead, Lorelai, the prime Lorelai. So until we have people to tr train to replace her, to hold off and ask her to wait till then. But it would seem like you would think that he's rejecting her, but no, he's basically kind of correct. I mean, she's one in charge of the program, and he does point out though. There's a slight change of wording from the book. In the book, he says basically. Um, that if it if gets publicly engaged to Juna, riots will break out. In the anime, it says violence will break out, which, don't mind the change, it's minor at best. But Juna's like, happily accepted, and, well, that's pretty much the episode of Nutshell. It's a damn good episode. And I'm glad they kept all the important bits in, and I was really hoping when, I was curious when they're going to get to um, Salt to begin engaged to the other girls. And here we are. In episode 17. Yep. Which, okay. I like that. That's actually pretty good. So, I would probably say... Now, I thought basically this finished by episode 19. That's what I thought basically would happen. But because of the fact that this episode covered two full chapters and an intermission... I guess they figure, though, maybe we'll finish adapting the book next week uh, with episode 18. It's possible, to say at least. Yep. But yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this particular view. 
Next view is their manga review. We're thinking, manga review? What's their manga review? Fire Force. Yep, I'm discussing the five most recent chapters of the manga. Okay? Next video. Bye.